Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. I'm Robert Petito and in this video we're going to take a look at the AI component in Glide and specifically how we can use it to create functionality in Glide that was previously unattainable. Since the dawn of publicly accessible generative AI, I have found that the AI component in Glide is simply one of the best use cases of embedded AI into a no-code platform. The AI component literally lets you create components straight out of your imagination, thereby allowing you to create components that were previously inconceivable. Let's have a look at what I mean. So here we have a basic inventory app where we have an items. Those items have names, descriptions, and categories. And let's say we want to allow our users to change the categories of those items and record a timestamp as to when it was last updated. The simplest way to allow users to change a category would be to use a choice component. So if I were to add a new choice component and I can point it to the category and the source will be my categories and we can allow our users to change a category like this, right? The choice component makes it really easy to do that but it only allows you to edit or change one value at a time. And that value being the one that you're writing to, in this case, the category. So even though I have this last updated column here, there's no way for this choice component to touch this column in addition to the category column. I can only update my category column. Now, before the availability of the AI component, what you would have had to do before was instead of using a choice component, you would have had to use a collection component, let's say a grid collection, and create some really complicated backend structure and some complicated uh, compound actions now called workflows in Glide that would have set the values in two different places. And it would have taken you probably at least an hour of dev time <laughs> to create that functionality. But now you can do it in seconds using the AI component. So let's take a look at how the AI component can replace our choice component in this case. And I'm going to show you my step-by-step -step process to creating an AI component uh, as efficiently as possible. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to trash this choice component. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new AI component here. Now, in the AI component, you have three sections, data, action, and chat. Data is where you can select columns that you want to read from or write to. With action, you can define certain actions to occur when user interacts with the AI component. Uh, and then chat is where you'll actually build this AI component. All right, so let's keep things simple. For our data, we want to point it to two columns, right? So we're going to add two items. And we're going to select those two columns. In this case, we want to write to the category column as our choice component once did. But we also want to write to our last updated column. Now, if you look down to the chat, you see that it says update to fields because I've just added a couple of fields here. And I could hit go to try to have the AI component try to do something with those two fields, but I'm going to actually prompt it some uh, instructions here first before just hitting go. So what I want to have happen is you want to first define the style or the functionality of your component. And then later you can define any actions that uh, should be triggered or functionality for the component. After you've got the functionality down, then we can worry maybe about styling the component a little bit. All right. So functionality wise, we want it to be a choice component. So I'm going to say a choice component and we can define what the style could be. In this case, a choice component displayed as chips for the following categories. And I could define the categories here, like category one, two, and three. But eventually, we'll want to replace that with a dynamic list of categories, which we don't currently have. We'd have to add it as a third data point. We'll get to that eventually. All right, let's just see what that gives us. By nature, the AI component is iterative in nature, so it's best to start small and keep adding or layering functionality as it gets built. Okay, so we see here um, that it created for us a choice component, and you see that it says category three in here is already being selected because category three is already the value that's written in our category column. All right, so if I were to click around here, category two, we see that it changed it in category one. So our AI component is already working as we want it to, which is awesome. Okay, next we're gonna add the action of adding the last updated. So I'm gonna say when a new category is clicked, 
also write the current date and time to the last updated field and go. So just so you know, some of the vernacular that you might want to use, um, I say when something is clicked by the user, also we want to use the word write when you're writing something new, and then use the word field when you're relating to anything in your data categories up here. All right, so let's give this a test. So if I click category two, it should also now update the last updated. And there we go, now we have a timestamp. And my fields component was also displaying the last timestamp. And now you see that it's in both cases. So here's category one, category three. If I click category three again, it's still updating it. So see how you see the time, the, the, the seconds here is updating. And maybe you don't want last updated if it's the same category. So we can instruct that. Um, if the item clicked matches the value in the category field, do not update the last updated field. So I typically use the word item when you're talking about things that you're clicking inside of the AI component. Um, let's see if that helps. So if I click category two, it didn't match. So we now have things updated. We see the seconds are still updating here. And if I click on category three, you see that it's no longer updating my last updated. So that's great. It is exactly what I want it to do. Now, since I'm already displaying the last updated here, I don't need it beneath the choice selector here. You'll find that in Glide that whenever you add fields here, it's gonna to try to display them as well. So you have to tell the AI component not to display them. So we'll just say, uh, do not display the last updated date beneath the selector. And I misspelled selector, but the AI component is actually smart enough to figure out what it is you're trying to say. <laughs> you're like, ah, I think you meant selector. Uh, and it will, it should, uh, go ahead and remove that for me. You see that it did. But the functionality remains, which is awesome. All right, so we have our functionality the way we want it. Now all we have to do is set a dynamic list of categories rather than the hard-coded categories. Because if I start adding different categories here, uh, let's say I have a uh, category four that I want to add, right? It's not going to give me the option to select category four here. So when I want to reference something dynamic, I like to keep everything in the user profile table because you can access that from any table at all. So I'm going to come over here to my user profile table and I'm going to create a join list of categories. And I'm going to say just join, join list of my categories, names like this. And I'm going to separate them not by a comma, but by a line break. So that way it looks like this. And the AI component can't yet read relations. It has to be like a basic column value of some sort. So that's why I'm using the join list because it ends up just being a string value. So I'm gonna add that item and I'm gonna to point to the user profile join categories, which I even spelled wrong here. Uh, I'll go ahead and just put that in there. And so we'll update our chat to say, allow the user to select any of the categories from the join categories field. All right, so let's see if category four gets added to our list. Hopefully it does. Okay, it did, but it's seeing it all as one item. So maybe it does have something to do with our line break. So I'm gonna come back over here to our admin section. And instead of doing the line break, maybe we'll separate by a comma. Or let's do a, yeah, let's try a comma first. Okay, so what we're gonna do is add a new item. We're gonna add that join categories back again. We're gonna repaste our prompt and hit go and see if it now finds that fourth category in our list of join categories. Hey, and there it goes. All right, so I guess you do need to comma separate. I was trying to be clever by doing a return character, but I guess I didn't need that. All right, so now we have category one, two, three, and now four, and it should be dynamic. So if I were to add a fifth category here, then it should automatically update my join list, right? 
which means category five should not be an option in my choice, and it is. So that's how you can uh, dynamically add new items. Uh, just make sure it's a string value and then your AI component can read them. And what's cool is that if you want to do any sort of more flair, you certainly could. You can style this however you'd like. So I could do something like add a hover effect to the choice component items and an animated flourish to the selected item. And you can be very specific with what you want, like add a zoom effect or add a blur effect or anything like that. And it will attempt to do that with CSS. So now if I hover, you see that now I have these kind of hover items, which is kind of cool. If I click on something, yeah, I guess the click didn't really do much. So I say, uh, when I click an item, add an animation to the selected item that lasts for uh, two seconds. At this point, it's all novelty, but I just wanted to show you that what's possible by adding some CSS. So there we go. So I added a cool little flash. <laughs> Completely purposeless, but you know, it's kind of fun. So again, straight out of your imagination, right? So hopefully you enjoyed this introduction to the AI component in Glide. Make sure you stay tuned for future AI component videos as part of this playlist. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave me a comment below. You can also reach out to me at x at rpetito or the community forum at robert underscore petito. And as always, thanks for watching.